Welcome everybody to the August 4th, 2020 Board of Health meeting. It is 6.04 p.m. Just gonna take a couple of notes because our administrative assistant is not on the meeting tonight. So I apologize for any delay. Um, I'm wait, just we're waiting um, for uh, Tom. So um, Mark Tassoni, do you have anything for citizen participation? Um, no, no, we just know that um, in the state down down by the cave, there was a super E site. And yeah, I just wonder if anything's been yeah, set Diane, up. Here. Diane, do you want to go through your routine of uh, stating what you need to stay at the bottom of it, saying that it's being recorded and all that stuff? Um, I, I haven't been holding to my. Uh, sorry, just give me one second. Okay. Before Mark the Sony begins his statements. <clears throat> um, no, just Tom just sent a follow up and he's coming on now. So. Okay. Um, well, now since KG mentioned it, I think everybody uh, else who's on knows that we, uh, we are recorded and we be um, aired on our local WACA TV. Um, again, it's not being live streamed for people who missed that part. Um, there's a public forum um, tonight that is live streaming, so they will be airing this um, after. Um, hi, Tom. Thank you for coming. How are you doing, everybody? Fine. Good. We, we are ready for you whenever you are. Um, if you want, we'll start with um, King. Well, we I'm just looking at the time. Um, can we expect somebody from King Beebe's? Did, did Mark have something to finish it or still? I, don't... I, did, I did want to finish it. And the time is, the is, that... time is, the time is uh, what, 6.06. <laughs> and I just was wondering, because down by the uh, Cape, there was the first side about Triple E with mosquitoes. Yeah. And I was just wondering if, um, has there been any sightings in the local Metro West area that's been said? That's one. And, and two, um, how much longer would it be before, um, we get a complete, um, this is to add, a complete breakdown on the uh, COVID with the numbers. And how much longer are you going to be on this to update us? That's it. All right. So then well, I was just going to say, let me just tell you, Mark, at our last meeting, I think it was, we had the Central Mass Mosquito Control um, joined us and did a very wonderful presentation. So it might, uh, if you want to look back at that meeting, um, so they do do testing in each town and we have had um, no positives in mosquitoes here in Ashland. And then Ed, if you want to follow up to your questions. Yeah, so Mark, the numbers on our website are updated as of a week ago Monday. I'll be, I'll be doing the next update tomorrow morning on the website. And we're not sure how long Ed is going to be with us. <laughs> I'll answer that. He's... There's, there's no end in sight for, for all of it, so. I, I, yeah, didn't I give my notice like six weeks ago? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm muting you too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Mark. Are you all set? All right, awesome. Sorry about that, Tom. I jumped ahead. No worries. Yeah. Um, do you expect somebody, though, from King Baby? As I, was, I just, um, I mean, it's only uh, 607, but we have people here from Shaw's, and I think, um, I think that's it right for Shaw. So I think we can, if you want to just do that one first, that's fine. Okay. You want to go to Shaw's? Uh, are we allowed to do it at six, yes. say 625? Yeah, because it's not a public, it's not a public hearing. Okay. All right. Thank you though, KG. Okay. Um, so I received a citizen complaint via email last week, I think on or around um, July 28th. And the customer had brought up concerns about expired meat being sold at Shaw's as well as um, questionable cleaning practices in the front end of the store, um, particularly rel re relating to uh, COVID-19 um, procedures uh, for supermarkets. So I, I went to the location, I conducted a full sanitary inspection of, of the supermarket. Um, I did some observing of the front end. Um, I, I feel like the cleaning that was going on there wasn't up to par. I watched the self checkout lane, saw several customers go through. It was kind of intermittently being cleaned. It wasn't really consistent. Um, 
I made my way through um, several of the departments in the store um, with the night manager. Um, Can I interrupt is, for one minute? Sure. Somebody's got loud voices in the background. Could they shut that down? Is that Tom's kids? <laughs> no, it's people talking. Oh, okay. Okay. I just assumed it was Tom's girl. <laughs> Hold on, give me one second. I don't think they're talking yet. It could be somebody in Tom's house. I was gonna say it might be Tom's. I I'm, I, I can't pay attention. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, no worries. So. Um, I made my way into the prepared foods section, uh, which behind there is also the, the produce back room. Just overall um, cleaning practices, very poor. Um, some uh, accumulation on, on walk-in door handles, um, some debris and, and food particles on the floor and, and back of produce, janitorial tools obstructing the hand sink in the produce back room. Um, the uh, area, um, be in the trash area was accumulated uh, with, with uh, out of use equipment and debris. Um, the back loading dock, um, which I, I submitted pictures, um, if I'm sure if everyone, if, I'm not sure if anybody had a chance to look at those, but yeah. some, uh, some recyclables accumulating on the rear loading dock of the business. Um, also um, a repeat violation of a mister mechanism that's in the um, stake case that I submitted a picture of for the for the record, um, with some soils and um, you know uh, accumulating in that in that unit. Um, so I immediately told them to remove that that stake out of that case until that could be thoroughly cleaned. Um, the manager was very helpful um, within the means that she was trained. Um, I, I think she was very accommodating within the means that she was trained. I felt like. Um, scrambling going on for finding some of the certificates I was asking for and then really pertinent questions not knowing the answer to them. Um, I made my way into the uh, the nature of the complaint going back to the nature of the complaint I did see several um, packages of meat that were out of date by a couple of days in some some cases. Um, so just really overall concerning um, things going on. Um, I feel like, I don't know what the, I don't know if there's, there's been a change in the management structure there. I know Mr. Crook had been the manager. I think he's been out on leave. I know Chris Montgomery had been the night manager I used to typically deal with. I think he's been transferred. So I'm not really familiar with the, the current team there right now, but um, I will say that uh, Mr. Doyle has been very receptive um, to address these concerns. Um, and even from the onset of this pandemic, Mr. Doyle has been in constant contact with the board um, in providing to us um, uh, in writing the way things should be done anyways, um, and, and the way that uh, things weren't found to be doing going on uh, this past week during that inspection. Um, I, uh, I recommend to the board that there be additional um, training for um, for staff, particularly in the prepared foods in the deli departments, um, potentially maybe recommending adding more certified food managers to staff. Um, and then if not, we need to request uh, more certified food manager certificates if they do have some for the department managers for, the, for those departments, uh, particularly where food preparation is going on. Um, and then um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is there was a stained ceiling tile, um, which normally wouldn't be a huge deal. It's not a really a critical issue. However, we've had a history with this uh, store appearing before the board because there was an extensive um, issue going on with some refrigeration lines back, I think in 2018 that had been uh, some jacketing on them had been corroded and it was leaking down into the drop tiles above the, the grocery store. And I don't know if that's something that's happening again. Is there, a, is there a void in the seam of that replacement that caused the moisture to get onto the, soil, the ceiling tiles again? Um, I'm not sure. Perhaps uh, the management could elaborate more on that. Um, but that's really all I have. And I'll, I'll open it up for any questions uh, if anybody has them. All right. Well, Go ahead. Can I, can I, can I just need to add? Um, so um, Chris Doyle, just after when Tom sent out the report, Chris was unable to print it off. Um, so he contacted um, Tom and I right away by email. I just want to make, make sure everybody knows this. 
and I actually printed everything off and met Chris at the store at 815 the next day. So I, I just want to make sure the board knows that um, he was extremely responsive and actually invited me to walk the store with him, um, you know, at the same time. So he wanted to see a lot of the things that Tom had seen for himself and brought me along. I just want to make sure the board knows that. Okay. Hello, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Ryan Brumley. I am the uh, uh, current acting store manager. Um, I was placed in Ashland um, about uh, roughly three weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, last week I was on vacation. Um, we have had uh, several, uh, since Tom has been out, different, uh, uh, different managers, uh, assistant managers there, but I have been placed uh, there permanently until until the foreseeable future or until potentially Tom comes back. Uh, but obviously, ultimately, I take full responsibility for what takes place in the store. Um, and uh, me and Chris will uh, tell you what uh, uh, we're doing to make sure that this uh, type of situation doesn't happen in the future. And I just wanted to make sure that uh, you obviously have our full attention. I just got back in town to Sunday, but I've been advised by the situation uh, ever since, ever since Thursday. So, uh, okay. Do you want, want to myself? Okay, great. Do you want to let us know what, um, I don't see Chris might've just jumped off for a minute, but, um, do you want to let us know what has been done to rectify, um, the situation? Yeah. So we've, uh, uh, had an, uh, an action plan. Uh, we actually brought down all our, uh, specialists, um, to, um, address every single issue that was on there. Mainly, you know, obviously what he, what, uh, Tom had said in the, uh, uh, Delhi and Lacard area, produce areas. We've actually deep cleaned and deep scrubbed all the all the particular areas. Gone over all the our coding policies with our uh, uh, management staff. We did have one new uh, meat manager that that was his first week that he had been uh, uh, transferred to that location. So um, we are retraining and doing everything that we have with all the individuals um, and uh, have an action plan. Uh, to make sure that we rectify that this doesn't uh, uh, ever pop up again. Um, and uh, that's our goal, and we've been working at it every day. Chris has been at the store uh, with this retraining the staff. Um, he was, uh, Tom was just talking about our uh, evening manager, Emily. Uh, she was our assistant customer service manager, and, and two weeks ago, uh, or three weeks ago, our evening manager was... Uh, uh, moved to a different location and she was promoted. So we are in the process of training her and she will be food certified, uh, you know, certified. So to make sure that she understands uh, proper procedures. And she, she was a little uh, inexperienced and, and we, we knew that, but uh, uh, we have been working with her and obviously we didn't need to do a better job with that. So a question that I had for you, um, I happened to drive by there today is, and I, I guess I want to back up a little bit. I'm assuming, I don't want to put words in, you know, management's mouth, but I, I'm assuming because of transition, this was an oversight because Tom has been there not long ago and these conditions weren't there. Um, but I know what I was going to ask you too, to follow up with, I, would, I drove by there today and that loading dock is still loaded to the brim. I mean, is that a delivery, a pickup issue? Yeah, so we were waiting on Tamra to pick up the uh, plastic containers. Um, so that's a location that we keep plastic in. Uh, we have two different vendors that we pick up our plastic and we clip it, pick up our glass. So they picked up our glass. And if you saw the two roll tops that we have back there, uh, we've already filled up one or two, we're getting, getting rid of the old debris and the rest of the stuff off that dock area. And so that's, that's currently what we're doing. Um, okay. In, in the past, they were the the practice was they were keeping it uh, in bins, and they hadn't supplied us with COVID. Uh, they have it. Tom were used to pick up who's the one who picks up our plastic, and then we have another organization that picks up our glass. Um, they used to do it twice a week, uh, but of lately, it's it's been a little bit more difficult. It's more like once every two weeks. So we have we don't have enough bins sometimes. So those carriages that were back there are damaged carriages, carriages that we don't use. So at the time that he did come to the visit, yes, that those were in carriages. And I can understand where you could see that, that old plastic bottle, you know, dirty bottles in a, in a shopping cart, you know, that's going to be used for shopping, then that, that would be unsanitary. Right. Uh, I have not met Tom. I met uh, Mark. Mark uh, 
we met Mark met us me about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago when he followed up on the uh, the visit for uh, to make sure for uh, uh, maximum occupancy in the in the building. All right, and then you did say, um, I just want to circle back, so you did say you, um, the, I think you said it was an assistant manager would be certified as a certified food manager? Uh, she will be doing the trade. So she, she's, what she is, is an a, a evening manager. Okay. So she just took the position. Before, she was an assistant customer service manager, and now she's taken, uh, we posted for the position, she's taken the position of the evening manager. Uh, Jay Corover is our uh, assistant store director, and he obviously is food certified. I believe Tom uh, may have, uh, Jay had told me that he had worked with Tom before. Uh, uh, question. Yep, yes, sir. Do you have a certified manager all the time when they have the store open? Yes. And they're all well trained? When, depending on the evening. Um, so that, that's where they might have an allergen. There's a difference between the allergen training and the food certification training. And you also have your you also have your cleaning crew completely working there. And nobody has been fired, and the staff has not been reduced. No, okay. you mean no one? How do you explain done in the training? How do you explain these accumulated uh, complaint violations rather than a instantaneous one? Because some of these things should have been like this for a couple of days at least, or a week. So how do you explain these things? What question are you asking? The, some, of the, some of the pictures I saw. The buildup and residue. In Whatever, the it, yeah. yeah. It, it, it doesn't happen on a single day if the no, cleaning, no, cleaning crew right. and everybody is working yeah. as they're supposed to. Yeah, but how, but do you how do you explain this if you have all the cleaning crew working there? How do you explain this? Is, this, the, is yeah, it negligence were, from any supervisors or negligence on the part of the workers? Or what do you have? It would be negligent on the department of the individual department heads. The individual department heads are responsible for cleaning those departments. We have logs in, in each individual. We have a store log that we do for uh, the entire department uh, and the individual departments the, for logs on uh, when they're supposed to clean and disinfect every four hours. Mm -hmm. And then in certain areas they clean every two hours. Uh, and then we have a store uh, logs that we do since COVID began. And obviously, you're right, the neglect build up from, in, in the, especially in the Deli Le Car, um, the different thing, it was, it, it's poor management. And, uh, you know, it's our responsibility to uh, rectify and make sure that that doesn't happen. Is there somebody who looks at all these logs and makes sure things are done properly? Is there somebody there or? Yeah, every, every, every day we're, they're collected, uh, brought uh, to our attention to make sure that they're checked off. But obviously, uh, that wasn't checked up on uh on the on the cleaning inside the departments so, so that the process will be changed to so that things get monitored and as well as cleaned yeah so we're properly. creating yeah uh yeah. like i said um i'm gonna have somebody that does it multiple times a day uh, well i not, understand uh, if once once they have the log log needs to be verified so that things are going right. up through because you can maybe have the log and nothing entered and nobody sees it then we, right log is no good anyway so exactly anyone can fill out a log but the point is to make sure that the, the not not necessarily that the log is checked off you know every whether it be the two hour log the four hour log it's that it's actually being done yeah. uh, and that and that is that is uh you know what i have been uh project to, or you know account held accountable to do and to make yeah. sure who's ever running the store whether it be me whether it be jay the assistant store director or whether it be Emily, the uh, eating manager, to make sure that that's uh, re rectified. You know, we've already cleaned and done everything, you know, except for the uh, the back hallway. We're still waiting for the bottle pickups, and then we have some other uh, equipment that we have to dispose of inside those bins, and then everything will be done and, and rectified for uh, a revisit follow-up visit. Yeah, you should also have an entry to check the ceilings, because last time that we suggested it when you had an issue, uh, September 2018, we had brought you back here into the board. Okay. And there was the damage on the ceiling, and then uh, I think it was some kind of a refrigeration line that was creating problem. Right. And yeah. It, we it, replaced... it, every, everybody looks down on the ground. Nobody looks at the ceiling. So that was suggested there that they should look at it and put it on the log. So you need to okay. make sure that it's implemented. 
Yeah, I know we, had, we changed, I think, about eight ceiling tiles. So uh, we, we had somebody uh, from uh, a company called Veritech who we've assigned, who every 30 days is kind of going to come in and do preventative maintenance. We'll actually be checking on those ceiling tiles so they can log them and know, all right, this spot 30 days ago it wasn't. So therefore, we can go up and start looking at uh, refrigeration lines. We have contacted our refrigeration company. Uh, they'll be in uh, over the next two days. We had a couple other uh, issues that they needed to rectify. Uh, one was a case that was down uh, at the time of the visit. Pro no product was in it, but uh, they will, they were going to monitor that and then make sure. And then if in turn, we need to get a roofer uh, to make sure there's not a leak in the roof or whether or not it's a refrigeration line, which would be, be held under the Hussman company. So this is going to be implemented now one, is that right? It's already, it just started today. The guy came okay. in today and every, every 30 days, this company will come in uh, and handle uh, maintenance calls and check those instances for us. Yeah. Something we just enacted today. Yeah, strict compliance is very important here because you're a large store and you cater to a lot yeah. of local residents and outsiders. So there is a huge population at risk. So we need to make sure that you have better handling on these complaints issues. Okay. I'm done, thank you. Before I go to the, the other board members, Chris, did you want to add anything? I know you jumped, jumped back to us. Yeah, I, I apologize. I had some technical difficulties with the, with the storm, um, but I just want to kind of reiterate some of the points, um, especially things that myself and other senior managers are doing um, for the company to kind of um, alleviate some of these issues and really monitor them and prevent them from occurring moving forward. Um, so I, I myself and the department specialists um, have actually um, basically put aside time over the next four weeks to visit the store myself at least two to three times a week and the specialist at least once a week to really, you know, once again, monitor and validate that the cleaning procedures are, are actually taking place and that the checklists aren't being filled out. Um, kind of like many food safety audits each time we go in to make sure we're maintaining the standards. And as Ryan said, we do have an outside company, third party, um, really coming in for that monthly um, preventative maintenance. Um, so, you know, as we identify the issues, um, we're not going to put it off for that 30 days. We're still going to put in um, work orders and submit the work orders accordingly. Um, so that way we can act on it a little bit faster. Um, but if we do miss anything or have small projects, those are when the preventative maintenance is really going to occur. Um, and then I know um, the training was brought up of the new evening manager and the department heads. So I myself am actually gonna be ho hosting a training um, both Thursday and Friday at the store for all of its department um, associates and the managers, whether they be new or tenured managers. Um, so that way we can go over the exact standards that we're looking for for the cleaning process, cover all the cleaning materials and the chemicals that we use. Um, and really that way they can't say they didn't know the standard or the, the procedures that ne they need to follow um, really to make, to, to prevent this from happening again. Because obviously um, this isn't our standard as a company and this isn't the standard obviously we want anyone to associate our name or sh the Shaw's name with. Um, so we're definitely, it, it has brought to the highest attention of BP of operations. Um, and I mean, everyone is fully aware and on board to make this one of our better stores um, just based off the visit we had last week. Thank you for that. Um, Judy, go ahead. Um, one second. Oh, I'm going to mute him again. Judy, I'm, you're muted. Sorry. There you go. That's okay. Um, I, I guess um, what I'm concerned about uh, is what we're seeing with people coming before the board for the last um, three or four weeks is that um, these issues that come to light don't seem to have taken place over a week or two, uh, possibly a whole lot more than that. So I guess I want to know, uh, you put managers in the store and I'm, I'm glad we have a new manager and, you know, it's going to get straightened out. But what, what do you do now currently that you weren't, maybe you weren't doing with corporate coming in and checking your stores because I'm kind of blown away that there were these issues there, especially during the pandemic. I know we've heard several complaints that you haven't had people at the doors checking and counting the number of people. Um, I know I was at uh, a competitor's in another town, actually in Bourne today, and there were so many people in the store that I left. Um, so 
I don't know if you've improved that as well, but I just feel like, you know, come on guys, this is really important. This is a pandemic and you're, you're charged with, you know, you might be the only place most people go out and they hope to be safe there. They're, they're really counting on us to keep them safe and to keep an overview of everything. And I'm, I just don't even know how this happened. Uh, if I can answer that, um, I agree with you. Um, I can't, um, I was just in Northbridge for a year and a half. Uh, I've been in Clinton. Uh, I've been with Shaw's for 25 years. Uh, I've managed over 12 uh, in my career, 15 locations. Um, and, I, you know, if I were to say, all right, th there, were, there were some issues there, and I'm there to fix them. Okay. Um, and, I, and I, you know, we'll fix them. And in, 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 in hindsight, it, it should have been done quicker. And, uh, you know, I think uh, the stores had multiple managers uh, in Tom's absence because it wasn't for sure if Tom would come back. He came back once and came back. And the lack of um, maybe in a single leader um, caused those inefficiencies. We have since changed a few uh, uh, department heads, and um, this is the uh, – um, ultimate, you know, you know, I guess kick in the ass that the, that they the shouldn't have shouldn't have ever come to this. Yeah. Uh, but now that it is, it it will be adhered to, and it will be. Uh, you're absolutely right. In Northridge, um, we had established uh, procedures and protocols, and do, do we have a bad day here and there? Yes. But your what you saw pictures of is not a bad day. That's a bad week, a bad month, and. Yeah. Uh, it's totally um, uncalled for, and I, I myself felt embarrassed, and uh, that you know I haven't been able to change it quick enough, and uh, you know um, I've never sat in front of a board of health meeting before in my life, so. Um, well, hopefully you I don't have to ever again. <laughs> exactly, and uh, I know it's I know it's extremely serious, and I take it serious. And I can tell you that I will do everything that I can. And oh, thank you. With my 25 years of experience, we'll make sure that that will not happen. And um, that's not to say that, you know, we're going to be perfect, but damn sure we're going to be better than what, what you guys thank saw. Thank you very much. I've, I look forward to seeing that. And if, if I can just add to that, I know um, with the pandemic and a lot of uncertainty in the oil areas, we do have established protocols. Um, however, over the past couple of weeks with, you know, the, the phases of Massachusetts reopening, unfortunately, we have gotten a little too lax with everything that we've done. Um, so we're actually re relaunching all of our COVID protocols um, because we have seen a change in our stores and the monitoring and everything like that kind of decline. Um, once again, with the reopening and the phases of Massachusetts, so we are relaunching our programs and protocols. Um, so hopefully it's once again, it's going to tighten everything back up. Um, so we're going to go back to the, the standards that, you know, at the very beginning, Ashland's knew that Shaw's had. Um, I mean, because I mean, we've had several visits of COVID compliance that have all gone very well. Um, so once again, we're, we're going to tighten everything back up, relaunch those programs, and we're going to be you know, as, as Ryan said, as close to perfect as humanly possible moving forward. Tom, did you want to add something? Yeah, just revisiting um, the issue with certified staff. I know that you had mentioned Emily was going to get certified. Um, so in the evening hours, does, does one of those certified managers train um, department leads in food safety protocols and principles? Because I feel like... Um, at night, there's a lack. There was kind of like a lack of oversight in the individual departments. Is do those department managers themselves have certified food protection certificates? I know that's normally the case in other grocery stores that I deal with. So, is there any plans to um, kind of ramp up training with um, closing staff to make sure? I know you mentioned checklists, but just to make sure that the, these things are going into action and that there's active managerial control. I think it's wonderful Emily's gonna get the certificate, but if she's spending most of her time kind of canvassing the store and in the front end, I, I don't think she'll have that direct um, oversight um, in the prepared foods, the deli and et cetera. So could you just elaborate on that? 
So most of our most of our department managers actually do have the food safety certification. Um, it's actually a conversation we had in one of our district meetings last week um, about scattering some of the management oversight so that way there is at least one food uh, food safety certified um, manager in the building at all times for that for that particular reason to have that oversight of all the other departments to make sure everything is um, you know in order. Um, so that is a conversation the district manager had with all the stores last week. Um, so that is definitely something we're working towards to kind of change the scheduling to have one at least one certified uh, manager in the store at all times. I, may I suggest that maybe you should look into the certificate managers per square foot area because each of these establishments have large areas compared mm -hmm. to any small restaurants where one or two would be sufficient. Maybe you may want to enhance the people with more certifications available so that instead of one person looking at the entire floor area to manage it may not be able to do it in time. So if you have two or three available at any one given time, that may be helpful so that they can distribute the load of observing, monitoring, and then uh, straightening out things where they are wrong. Absolutely, because we have a, we do have assistant um, department managers as well. Um, so maybe that's something we can look into to have a have name trained as well. Chris, do you have any questions? Yeah, I just, I want to first acknowledge to, to Ryan and to Chris that, that I, you know, I, I wouldn't want their job. It, it's a hard job to manage a supermarket. I understand the complexities of that kind of organization. And when they, when, you know, I, I think both have been very sincere and genuine about their intent and have owned up to the situation at hand. And, and I'm glad because it's, it's really necessary to us as a board and to the constituency in which we serve. But uh, I also think that, um, because there have been some past offenses with this particular building, and they may be different, but it's still the same store in the same place. Um, I think that we owe it to the people that we serve to, to make sure that they know that we're not being lax and that the, the people that we oversee in the same businesses don't think that you know, okay, this kind of thing happens. They just go there and they, you know, they give you a little slap on the wrist and yell at you and it's no big deal. Um, I think it's important that we emphasize, and, and I think that both Chris and Ryan recognize that, that this is a very serious thing. Um, but I would also recommend that if any of these offenses are finable according to our programs that, that fines are imposed um, accordingly uh, so that uh, you know, so that all involved understand that 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 these are serious policies and and rules. And as far as uh, continued inspections, you know, if we need to increase our inspection program for that particular store uh, to make sure that they're following uh, their protocols and doing as they say, uh, I think that that's necessary as well. So, um, but I also want to say thank you very much to Ryan and to Chris for coming here and for not trying to skate past the issue and for acknowledging the, the real problem and for uh, having a plan of action moving forward. Ron, go ahead. Yeah, this is more of a question for Tom. I also, you know, uh, echo at least uh, what Chris had said. I appreciate Ryan and Chris and your candor and coming in front of the board and I know you're gonna get things rectified, but Tom, you do this all the time, is there, and I don't want to, you know, you have enough crap to do. I know I'm not expecting you to hold their hand, but are there protocols or is, you know, do you follow them step by step to make sure things are getting done or do they just know what needs to be done and it's up to them? Or can you give them any resources, whether it's checklists, whether it's, you know, this is how it's done in other stores to make sure that, that, their practices are such that they're going to meet the standards that are set by the law and that you expect. Yeah, that's a good question, Ron. Thank you. And then um, I think Chris can allude to this uh, between myself, um, Ed, and, and Agent Orem. Um, since the beginning of this, um, we've provided um, the grocery store orders and writing to the, to the store management, the, the checklist for retail and grocery establishments that Chris is also familiar with. So um, we definitely try to, and at least I try to, um, provide the operators with the, all the pertinent information that they need 
And also too, what you also brought up is give them examples of how other people in the field might be doing something or what their approach is. Um, I know we've had a couple of issues. I've been in this store many times since the beginning of the year. I make that a priority to go into the grocery stores because I, I feel like they're the highest risk in the community and alluding to what, uh, referring to what KG said earlier, um, they serve a larger population. So um, Chris, Mr. Doyle is very well versed in what the requirements are. It's just a matter of um, there was a disconnect, I guess, um, and, that, and those things getting executed this time around. Um, and I'm glad that you know, we and having worked in the grocery industry myself for, for 15 years, I can certainly understand and empathize and relate with how hard these people work and how much really they're putting themselves at risk on a daily basis during this these times. So, um, it's really important to to follow what the protocols are, and then believe me, it's a learning curve for everybody. Um, sometimes we've seen earlier on in the pandemic how these requirements and things coming down from the governor can change, you know, by the week. Um, mm -hmm. So it's hard to keep up with what the requir what requirements actually are. Um, but I think that moving forward, um, I have confidence that, you know, Shaw's is, is kind of uh, well aware of what they should be doing and they're going to take steps to implement that. Okay. Well, I, want, I, I do want to kind of conclude this. We do have another establishment that we want to talk about. Um, but I do want to, I know we've all said it, but um, because of both grocery stores, because we have both of your um, management here, that, you know, it is such a large volume of people that people are not leaving their house these days. And the only place that they're going is a grocery store or maybe a local food establishment to get takeout. So, I mean, the volume of people that we're targeting, we're all trying to protect is very large right now. And I think I was not on the board at the time, but to know that this is the second physical appearance at a board of health meeting was a little shocking, I think, to some of the members, including myself. So um, I do believe we have your attention and I appreciate it. I know, you know, time is valuable. So I appreciate you coming to a nighttime meeting to discuss it and um, please keep up the good work and hopefully we won't see you on a Zoom meeting in the future. Um, KG, did you have something to add? Yeah, I, I do have a question for Tom. Uh, under normal circumstances, so that is prior to COVID issues, are these establishments on a uh, two per year inspection list or are they multiple? Tom? So, yes, KG, sorry, I had a problem with the mute button. Um, so the, there's two permits in the Shaw's, one being for the sushi and one being for the supermarket itself. Um, at a minimum, I try to get into this, these stores three times a year. However, I can say with confidence over the past three years, I've been in the store several times. Um, we get a lot of, because of the people, the volume of people that are served, we get a lot of complaints that initiate inspections and some of them are frivolous and unfounded and others are found with cause. So I find myself, um, in this establishment um, quite frequently. Um, and I make it a point, even if I w didn't get a complaint, to, to inspect the supermarkets in the community uh, on, a, on a frequent basis and it treated as an urgent category risk. And that would mean a minimum of three inspections per year. Okay, if, if need be, need to be done more, it's better than, it's better because they keep the community safe from uh, any issues that come up between inspections. So that'll be helpful. I agree, KG, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, Chris, do you want, um, you mentioned the fining and the inspection. Do you want to make a motion or do you want to leave it be? Uh, I mean, I guess we can throw it out there for discussion for the board. I know um, we, um, Tom, what if we have, oh, I'm sorry, I'm shuffling people. See what happens when you do this for room. I'm shuffling pieces of paper. Um, what if we have for critical, Tom? We can't hear you, Diane. Diane, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. We're losing your voice. We couldn't hear you. you. When you turn your head, yeah. <laughs> when, you... when you turn your head, we couldn't hear you. <laughs> so, Tom, what do we have for, um, I'm just thinking if, um, if Chris was to make a motion um, to issue a violation notice to Shaw's, um, what do we have for critical violations? Kind of going backwards here. Um, Nothing critical, and, uh, right? Should, let me pull up the report and I'll count them. Okay, I'm just looking at it here. We're in the process of changing systems too, so it would be nice when we can. Oh 
Just mm -hmm. looking here, I don't see. I mean, we have. Uh... I know, Diane, if I may, um, the executive order through the governor um, speaks about a um, $300 fine for repeat violations associated with COVID. Okay. Um, so seeing as though as I was in there, I think a couple of times, um, I'll have to look at my reports, but I believe I was in there for a COVID related complaint in June about uh, people not uh, counting the customers entering the store. Right. And then this time around was also a COVID complaint. So I would suggest or recommend to the board that they issue a $300 $3 fine. Okay. I have a technical question. Um, can we, uh, so I don't know where this $300 goes. Does it go into additional so we can inspect more often places or is it something we can say a $300 donation to Ashland Food Pantry? So the town adopted a um, finding schedule many years ago called non-criminal dispossession. So when a violation notice is issued to an establishment, uh, we have a, a, um, a tiered approach. What Tom is referring to is a governor's fee schedule versus ours um, that we have adopted locally. Um, by law, that money has to go into the general fund if it's issued okay. under non-criminal disposition. Um, I, 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 I kind of to back up a little bit, I mean, we, we brought you here and the next establishment because we take this very serious and we want to set the tone out there that we take these things very seriously. The last establishment um, did not get a violation notice because of the, um, they were getting penalties to the state instead of to the town. Um, I don't have an issue with them getting a, um, a COVID violation. Um, Hi, this is an exclusive announcement. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I, just so you know, I apologize. I walked away from it because I heard a loud bang, bang and I wanted to make sure my house was okay. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so what is, what's the board members feel about the $300 COVID uh, violation um, fine? Yeah, I, I move that we fine Shaw's $300 for repeat COVID violation and uh, they should be subject to additional inspections at our inspector's discretion. Uh, and I, I believe under the, uh, I believe they pay for those inspections, if I'm not mistaken, Correct. and yep. and and uh, uh, and impose uh, paid inspections at the at the inspector's uh, discretion. Can I get a second? Maybe not. <laughs> okay. okay. Any further discussion? Okay. I, I don't, I mean, in principle, I agree with Chris. I don't think that a store of that magnitude, a $300 fine, you know, does anything. I think it does to a mom and pop pizza place. Uh, and I, I, I do think that, uh, that extra inspections at the store's expense would be reasonable. And I don't disagree with Chris. I just don't really know what kind of motivation that is other uh, I'll tell you I'll tell you Ron if I can answer that question yeah. it, you're right to a company like Shaw's that may be big enough to absorb the $300 it's not that big a hit yeah. but it, it does two other things first it imposes fairness upon the smaller people who it is a big hit to that we are going to find in the same circumstance and it also shows everybody regardless of their size that there is a, a, f a fine structure for a very specific reason and it, it shouldn't be ignored. That, that's I, my, my position. And, on and if I can add to, with, with what you're saying is, is because we need, I mean, especially with COVID, like, I mean, our, again, I'm referring to the last one as well. These places should be spick and span. This, this supposed to be having extra cleaning. This supposed yeah. to have extra checks. This supposed to have extra staff. There's not, I mean, this shouldn't have been this, this situation, period, if they were doing what they were supposed to do for COVID. I'd, I'd also add, if I can, that the people that uh, voted for us to be their board of health, to be the overseer of them, to protect them, in this particular case, if there is a COVID violation, 
that they should be fined for and they're not being fined for. I, I don't think that's gonna sit well with the constituency. And, and, and for no reason other than we're here to serve them, I, I, as a constituent, I'd be angry under the same circumstances. Um, it's not meant as much to be, like you said, it, it's a slap on the wrist to, a, to the corporation of Shaw's, but it's also significant and symbolic of the fact that they made a mistake and mistakes come with consequences. Uh, you know, you, you convinced me. I'm going to second that motion. Yeah. Okay, let me just add, well, further discussion. Tom, did you have something you wanted to say? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that. I mean, technically, if we if you wanted to, you could issue the COVID fine, which is linked to the governor's executive order, and I think it references the same CMR that the town bylaw does under the ability for the board of health to issue fines under the state sanitary code in the form of a nuisance notice. And then on top of that, you could theoretically go through the inspection report and reference the town bylaw and ass assess a fine for each critical issue um, on top of the $300. But we'd have to look at the report and tabulate that. So I was uh, holding back only because uh, you know, the last one we didn't because there was also a state thing involved and I, I'm just trying to be fair across the board. Um, but listening to Tom and, and the additional fines that could take place and knowing um, that we've gone in there before and things weren't fixed and, um, you know, I don't know, it, it's Chris, right? Dan, uh, Chris Doyle. Doyle, you said something about you've been a little lackadaisical, you know, I, not that word exactly, but you know, pulling back a little on the COVID stuff, and I, I think it's probably quite the opposite you should be doing. So, I, I'd like to bring it up for a vote again. Okay. Yep. So we do have a second. Any further discussion? Uh, okay. All. I, I, I think I think it is justified in terms of because we need to make sure okay. they learn a lesson and then continue to keep this this store safe enough for people to visit back. But these are the only stores that people get in there to get their groceries and then yep. the source needs to be clean and safe. This yep. is our, our first and hopefully our last COVID uh, fine. So I oh, hope so. Um, so I'd like to call for a vote. All in favor? KG, aye. Judy. Aye, Chris. Aye, Ron. Aye, Diane. <laughs> All in favor. So Tom will, um, Tom will issue you a violation notice for the COVID and um, keep up the good work guys and uh, hopefully uh, Things get better. Oh, things well, will get better. I, get, I'll also I guess be, I will also do follow-up inspections. I was just gonna say that I'll be there for a follow-up inspection Wednesday evening. Okay. Is that Wednesday tomorrow evening? Yes, tomorrow evening. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right, guys, you're more than welcome to stay in the, the meeting, but we're gonna move on to the next establishment. Okay. Tommy, you all set for King BB? Yes. So um, Sergeant Berman um, conducted a COVID compliance check. Um, when was that, Ed, for King Beebe's? July 28th. Yeah, July 28th. July 28th. I went out there the next day because of some concerns that Sergeant Berman had brought to my attention um, and conducted a full sanitary inspection. And upon my arrival, um, the certified manager wasn't there. Um, and then I was told by the staff on site that he's he's rarely there. He actually works at the other store that is in, I think it's in Malden, I'm not sure. Um, there was uh, two broken refrigerators. Um, so my assessment was they didn't have enough refrigeration to support the, the menu that they're presenting to the public. Um, they were, uh, I saw some poor hand washing practices. They were, I saw a gentleman rinse his hands off haphazardly in a food prep sink rather than wash his hands in the designated hand sink as is required. And then the designated hand sink um, itself uh, was obstructed, um, I believe with bottles of, of soda. I did submit yeah. to the, um, some photographs from this inspection as well. Yeah, you couldn't even get to the sink. 
They were also keeping some raw shell eggs in a broken refrigerator that temped out at well over 70 degrees. And just so for the board's knowledge, um, whole shell eggs is supposed to be held at 45 degrees or below. Every other hazardous food is supposed to be held at 41 degrees or below. Um, but eggs, you, you kind of have that little bit of a buffer, but to be at 70 degrees is, is um, really a risk to public health. So I made them throw it away on site. Uh, there was uh, um, if no I could just interrupt you just one second yeah. um, I just know yeah. here here in Ashland I Chris just lost power he's rebooting he's getting back on so if okay. anybody has interruptions just we'll just do the best we can okay thank you sorry no problem um, also no date marking of some prepared pasta um, in, in one of the working refrigerators um, and then um, the Poor um, washing, rinsing, and sanitizing practices for um, utensils and equipment. Um, the three compartment sink was not set up properly with um, hot soapy water, rinse water, and sanitizing solution. Um, also, um, many of the things that Sergeant Berman had reviewed with them um, weren't being implemented. Um, the COVID practices, um, obviously hand washing is, is pinnacle to all of this. Um, you know, signage and, and more of a, uh, you know, um, sanitizer availability for, for customers and staff. Um, so just overall concerning uh, findings. I then um, issued them um, a 72 hour notice of, of correction and I, and I told them that um, they would probably um, be requested to appear. But then I did, I did go back there um, on the 30th um, and some of the issues, but not all were corrected. We still have the issue with nobody has an allergen certificate that's there. Nobody has a serve safe certificate that is there full time. We still have two broken refrigerators. Um, they've agreed to reduce their menu until they can get those repaired. Um, but I just feel like, uh, it's just kind of a deer in the headlight situation. There's nobody really has any command over what's going on there. Um, I feel like there's a lack of um, what we call active managerial control um, and executing um, the food safety practices that are expected um, and are always the case. And then also on top of that, um, you know, the COVID concerns that, you know, we require um, heightened cleaning practices during these times. We always require cleaning practices by a version of the food code. We want equipment to be sanitized properly. We don't want people just rinsing things off in the sink. Um, you know, uh, we, we just want these, these are common practices. These are expected things that we want to happen and um, just overall unacceptable findings at, at this inspection. Okay, it, um, is it Julio? Are you Julio? Okay. Julio, do, uh, yeah, do, so, uh, do you want to address uh, some of the concerns with the board for us, please? So um, I'm not Julio. Um, I'm, oh. I'm a, he's done. So I'm sorry. Uh, what is your name? My name is John. John. Yeah. So um, as like what well, um the he, he was talking about the refrigerator. So um, I just call him and then just, I just talk to him. And I, I told can him. I said, that, um, John. John, if I can interrupt you for a minute, are you a manager there? Do you own the business? So what? What do you do? No, no. I'm I'm the son of uh of Julio. Oh, okay. So you're the son of the owner. Yeah. Okay. So and if I, I just, can just ask you, just just for my knowledge, are you are you a certified food manager? Are you? Mhm. Mm okay. And so, go so, ahead. I just talked to him, and I just like on the phone, and I told him like about the refrigerators. So they got broke. Um, I think on twenty fifth. Then I told him, um, I'm I'm gonna get a, like um, another two. I'm gonna get two new ones like on Tuesday next week. And about like the hand soap, like those things are or you already get um get got fixed. Okay. Um with, if somebody with else has to anything to say, I'm actually speechless because I, I I guess I'll start off by saying that um I Tom has already mentioned it that I mean, the, these your establishments should be cleaner than it ever has been because of COVID. 
So mm -hmm. for him to walk in and find these violations, um, I, I just, I, it's not too often that I am speechless, to be honest with you. My, my fellow board members are going to be surprised. Um, please, if somebody else has anything else to say. Go ahead, Tom. I just want to mention um, when this, I'm sorry, what's your name, sir? From John. Oh, John. John. John, I, I noticed when you logged on earlier, just by happenstance, that you were in the kitchen. Was that the kitchen of King Beebe's? No, the, um, that was Malden. Oh, you were in Malden. Okay. Yeah, I'm in Malden right now. Because I noticed there was a, quite a few folks that didn't have face masks on, just as a point of reference. So these are the type of issues that we don't want to happen. I know that's a total, so I won't even get into it because it's a totally different restaurant. But so you're in Malden. Who's it? Who's it, at it, King it, Beebe's right now? Who's who's running King King Beebe's? Is there a, is there a adequate certified manager there that is on uh, staff there? So on the right, but uh, he didn't speak English, so I'm gonna just translate for him. I already, I already tell him about like the um the things in um national. Okay, who who are you translating for? For my dad, Julio. Is that who's standing behind you? Yeah, no, yeah, he's the owner. Okay, okay. Um, so as we speak in Ashland, mm -hmm. so you, neither one of you are in Ashland. Who is in Ashland right now? Um, I don't know who's in Ashland now. Um, the manager and the uh, and the chat and like the chef. Okay, like, what do we have? The, the, um, the person like who cooks and then the manager. Okay, so what's the manager's name? I'm just not. I'm where I'm at right now, sitting here is I'm not confident anybody is paying attention to what's going on at this establishment. So you can yeah, translate that to your father, but I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling very unsettled about the situation we have in front of us right now. Okay, so you want, you want, to, know, you want to know the name of, of the menu, right? Yes, who is running the store as we speak? Uh, Nar uh, his name is Narcelio. That's a first name? Yes. And I don't know his um his last name. Okay. Does your dad know his last name? I don't know what you name Silva. Silva. And is he a certified food manager? Ele é o cara de cuidado da comida, sim, sim. Yep. Okay. Where is that person's certificate? Que que é? Cadê o nosso certificado? Então, não, ele não, ele vai fazer o certificado. A gente já tá vendo uma companhia para fazer o certificado dele. So um, he gonna do the cer uh, the certificate, and we are looking for the company. We are you already looking for the company. So just so, so you know, I needed a receipt yesterday for this. And I also have a concern. And again, I I think I know where I'm going already with the situation. But this inspect this inspection was done on the 28th. You went mm -hmm. back on the 29th. You've been in contact with them, and and now they're telling us that they're getting a refrigerator a week from. So that's, I'm going to look at my calendar because I don't want to be incorrect here. Uh, 11. Okay, so um, our, our, I, t I told him that I bought the refrigerator and uh, I cannot go pick pick up them. They're going to deliver it for me. So I cannot like go to the store and then pick the refrigerator. They're going to deliver it at the restaurant. I told him that on the phone. And he asked for a receipt. Okay. Okay. And the refrigerator, um, the owner, he said, um, the refrigerator, um, they already fixed it. They already put the new one right there. I didn't understand that. I'm sorry. What was that? Um, the owner, he yeah. said, um, the refrigerator, it is running right, right now. It is running. It's not broken anymore. Okay. Uh, did they repair it, you mean? What? It's been repaired. Yeah, it, it's working right now. Okay, so did he hire a repair company to come in and repair it? How did it all of a sudden start working? Quando ele começou a fazer? Na sexta-feira, o rapaz foi lá e já viu que tudo arrumado. Fala assim, se tem algumas coisas para a gente fazer lá, a gente vamos fazer. Só que devido à pandemia, a situação nós, de nós que somos pequenos é muito mais difícil que os que são grandes que já estão quebrando. Explica para ele. Fala que a sexta-feira o Bora Hell foi lá e viu que estava tudo ok. Que o que a gente pode fazer, ele pode já fazer falou. nós fizemos. Ele, ele falou já que foi lá sexta-feira. Por enquanto, o que nós podemos fazer é só contratar uma companhia para dar um certo safety. So, um, what, what is, um, he told me right now, the Board of Health, 
um, just go there on uh, on Friday. Um, he sees some things that was wrong. Um, we know about that. We are um, gonna fix it. But like about the pandemic, thing. so um, the things go like um, go low for us, like like money, those things. And the only thing they are now they're looking for, um, it is like a company to do like the uh, certificate, the service um, certificate. So do you have anybody on staff in Ashland that has, that works there full time, that has a, it has the proper certification? Tem? Alguém que trabalha lá o tempo todo que tem esse negócio de certificado aí? Eu fico lá quatro vezes por semana. Ele já falou que você não fica, Marcelo. Não, você não. raramente vai lá. Não adianta mentir. Fala, fala que não, que é o Marcelo que vai fazer o curso. Ah, uh, is it Marcelo? Who wants to do that? Narcelio, the, uh, the manager, he, he's going to do that. He's going to do that. He doesn't have that, though. Right. Yeah, he doesn't have that. Right. John, just hang on tight for me for one minute. Um, Tom, can you help me out here? Because um, I don't think my recommendation to the board is probably going to be too welcomed. Uh, oh, okay. uh, if you're going where I'm going, uh, we're in the okay. same place, I think. Okay. Mm. I was going to say, I, I did I'm know for it. So John, um, yep. I, I guess got to jump in. I completely understand money's low. COVID has really hurt a lot of people. And I know small businesses have really, really been affected and my heart breaks for that. But it doesn't lessen the fact that during these times, especially, we have to be so careful about health and safety. So those refrigerators aren't working and you don't have anybody there right now that's food cert certified. So. I don't know how you're open because the refrigerator has to work right for you to serve good food that's prepared and, and, and stored correctly. So I'm kind of worried and I, I think this is what you're going to hear from the board in a minute. Okay, so um, and the owner, who did he say um, he need two weeks um, for um, Marcelo to get like the, um, the certificate? Because he, um, he's... As, yep. as of right now, John, has had you have a receipt that you can email us i just got something from okay so do you have a receipt that you have actually signed up for a class for narcelio ela falou assim se você tem um recibo que você já colocou o narcelio na classe você pode mandar para não eu tô preciso que eles okay. me enviem uma lista das pessoas que eles podem me indicar so he say um he don't have a receipt um he needs um you guys send him like um someone who can like um Teach him or somebody like that like, to get the certificate. Like, um, Man, let Tom speak. Uh, yeah. John, just hold on one second. Tom, go ahead. I just emailed you, sir, a list of food safety instructors. If you go through it, you will find some of them teach the class in Portuguese. I highly suggest you contact one of them and get a receipt to this board as soon as you can. When did you send it? He just sent it. He just sent it because I just got it as well. Oh, he just sent it right now? <coughs> Tom, so now, I'm sure you... Looking at it, <coughs> Diane, looking at it, they don't seem to have even minimum requirement that is needed to open a business like this. Yeah. So we, we well, need to keep the safety of the public yeah let's get in big consideration let's get to the to the motion uh, well i was just gonna, i was just going to say yeah i was just going to say to tom i think you probably know where we're going um i don't think any of us five i'm sure yourself feel comfortable at all with this establishment being open today tonight um there is nobody there who's certified there has i could just reiterate my concern that he's, just for the record i'm muting them um so they said that, you, that somebody was there friday so it was just it was a week ago that the this was found out and they have not even signed up for a class that shows to me total disregard for the inspectors yeah. that have done their job so chris if, if you'd like to draft a motion that would be fabulous i move that we uh, effective immediately king b king bb's is closed for business until they can meet all of the necessary requirements to be open under the laws of the uh, town, uh, until there's a certified food inspector available 
uh, during their opening hours and until all uh, violations have been cleared up and until uh, including the refrigeration and, and all other uh, cited all, violations. All food uh, food. Furthermore, I believe that uh, they should be fined to the maximum possible uh, uh, the maximum the maximum possible allowed by our uh, current food code and or um, COVID violations, COVID regulations uh, for all outstanding offenses. I second that. I, um, I can't vote to find them any further in this climate. I was going to say, let's just, I just want to say, so for further discussion. Um, um, you can move I'm to amend. Well, I was going to say, I, I'm just for discussion, I'm anticipating that they're not going to be closed just overnight. I'm assuming it's going to be multiple days. I'm, mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I, you know. So can I amend it? Sure. That they be closed until there is a food certified manager there, and that could be John going to that location, until their refrigeration works properly, whether that means it gets delivered or fixed, and any other, Tom, are there any other major things that needed to be done? But I mean, I want them all done. But what if we put all, all I would just code. stipulate if they can't reopen until Tom Curran inspects them and makes sure that they're in okay. compliance. Okay. Okay. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Could you unmute John in case he has any? Yeah, I was gonna. Yep. Just I was gonna just take the vote first, and then we'll uh, make sure that he knows um, what just okay. happened. So, all in favor? Diane. Aye. Aye Chris. Chris. Yeah. So, John, I there you go. I, I muted you. Um, the board was having a discussion. I don't know if you followed it. Um, mm -hmm. Because of the nature of the violations, we have just ordered an emergency closure. Uh, excuse me, that's tough. An emergency closure of your establishment tonight. Um, you and your dad need to contact the Ashland store and notify them that the board just closed your establishment because they do not have the proper, proper certification, proper certification, food handling, cleanliness of the establishment to be operating in Ashland. And until you meet all of the requirements and have an inspection from our food inspector, Tom Curran, you will not be allowed to open up your doors and serve food. All right. You will, uh, actually we didn't do the fine, okay. so. Um, um, how do we, uh, I mean, I'm sure, I know how we're going to ensure that they're not open here, um, um, but is that, um, Tom, you, I assume you're the scope, well, we can talk about it after. So, John, you'll notify the Ashland establishment that they need to close the doors? Yep. Okay, and uh, as soon as, as soon, if you need assistance, you need to reach out to Tom and he will um, work with you to get certification and get everything up to par. Right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. You're welcome to stay on our meeting, but you don't have to. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, just to um, finish up with you, I just wanted to check. I didn't know um, how you wanted to handle it tonight. Um, I mean, I, I would. I, I mean, I'd be willing if, and, and somebody else wants to do it as well, but um, I'd be willing to go there and make sure that they, um, their establishment is closed. Um, I'm just not confident um, at much right now, so. Um, if somebody could just verify that they did close tonight for me, I'll be out there tomorrow night. I will okay. certainly go by there. Um, I think the board made a, a wise decision. It's unfortunate. However, I, uh, I don't see any real effort to kind of bring the business. I'll Thanks. I'll go over. I'll go over as soon as we're done. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll go over. Ed, we'll, we can go over together just because. I'll pick you up. Oh, I'll pick great. you up. <laughs> Look at that. Um, hey, you know, I just, I just, okay. can, I, can I just make a comment, everybody, about this? You know, I just want to just reiterate what a team this has become with, especially with Tom and I. You know, I go out and do a COVID, and, you know, sometimes I'll just see other things. I pick up the phone, call Tom, and you know, this is how we're finding this stuff. Um, right. And also, you know, I sat with this, this, this company for almost 45 minutes going through all the paperwork, what they needed to do with COVID <laughs> and Tom shows up the next day and they didn't do any of it. 
it's showing to, and I, you know, it, you know, being involved with the town for many years, I mean, I haven't sat here and done this twice in the last month. I, <coughs> we need to let these places know, and I think we're making it very clear. Yeah. Um, that this is not this is not how we operate in the town of Ashland. We want to hold these establishments to the highest standard, and if they're not going to follow the rules, they're not going to operate. Um, it was just it was I thought it was a blatant disregard, and I thankful that we all voted to do what we did. So um, yeah. right. Judy sees my phone number and cringes. <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll do is I do Sorry, what, I, what I, happened. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, Tom, I do want to let you go. And if I can, um, I just want to talk about a couple uh, of things while you're yep. here. Um, see, I, think I, I do have something for Tom. So if... Okay. Did you want to go now, KJ? Go ahead. I can. Um, I'm sure, Tom, I think I had crisscrossed a text message or an email regarding uh, emails to the food vendors about certified food manager being there. Um, has that been sent out already to all the vendors or is that still on hold? Um, I will do that tomorrow. Okay, because I was really concerned about certificate managers being fired by all of these during the COVID situation because that's one of the uh, high paid job and they just eliminate that to save money. Right. So, and, what, and then the establishments come back here and then don't hire them and then they conduct all these violations. That's what happens. So we need to make sure that they're aware that we're looking for the Certificate finally just being there and the establishment is clean enough for that purpose. Well, I have a question. You know, we, we just learned, I don't know if we just learned tonight, but we certainly learned, some of us learned tonight that they clearly have an establishment. I think it was in Menden that they said they were in. Malden. 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 So, you know, we closed the, their store in Ashland for gross violations. Do we have a, a moral obligation to call the Board of Health in Malden and say, you know, you might want to take a look. Obviously, they shouldn't even have the cell phone in the kitchen. Yeah. It's one of the first violations that we already saw. Well, that, that's a good point, Chris. I, I, don't th I don't think it's a bad idea for us to do that. Um, I just, I was, what I was going to propose is that one of us do it and not have Tom do it. Yeah, that's fine. And as long as it doesn't violate any state law or the federal law, that's right. I, I yeah, we are trying to trying to keep the other uh, population public, and the other side healthy. It's public information that we just it's this meeting's public information. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, there's no reason. Um, there's no reason. And, and ju just for the record, too, even the last establishment we had on here, um, I contacted the business owner who as well has a business in another community to make sure he knew that his investment here in Ashland uh, was closed. Um, so I'm, I have no problem doing it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll contact Malden and let them know just, um, and if I don't, we'll have to find out the name of the establishment, but, um, it, it looks like it's King BB's. I'm looking at Grubhub King BB's delivery 298 Lebanon street in Malden. All right. I will take care of that for the, for you. Um, just jumping ahead just a little bit here for the food, um, food update. Um, you, I know, I know, Tom. I was gonna. These are just. I, I listed a bunch of things on the agenda tonight, which just are items for that were kind of on my pending list, and I wanted to just review them. Um, so the food program. I did see an email today that uh, for the new program itself, there's going to be another training coming up, um, and then after that, it's out. I mean, it seems like that we'll be rolling that program out. Um, trying to think. If, is there any updates you want to give us on that food program, Tom, or is it your waiter? Um, just uh, nothing really new, but just we are um, anticipating the second um, virtual training with it. And then um, I think Mark had mentioned before we went on vacation, like a rollout in early September. Um, and yeah, but my thought on that um, is that I know we talked about looking at a, um, a um, grading system, but I think what we should start out doing is um, just rolling the program out because I know it's going to be more user friendly than you and Mark are both using the same system. And as as we move into the program, I know with the COVID inspections are done that way as well. Then we can talk about a grading system or things like that. Maybe we can talk about it, um, you know, maybe um, in, in, uh, in four weeks. I'm sorry? Do it in phases. Well, right, because I, I think, I mean, I think the, the big benefit, first of all, is that you and Mark are both going to use the same program. 
that's I mean big, so we can track everything. Um, so let's get the program going, and then um, we'll you know talk about doing um, a rollout of um, you know the grading system. We'll call it if that's okay. Tom, I had a question regarding uh, in and out timings at the establishment for inspection. Is that already in it, or have you talked to them to get that implemented in it? It is KG. It's it is in there. Um, and once you open the inspection, and then once you close it out and get a signature, that okay. is also in there. Um, stamps kick it also up. has a geographical coordinate on the report, so it you could look it up to make sure that. When I said I was at Shaw's, I was at Shaw's. So, okay. um, but it also doesn't take into account like a post inspection conference where I, you know, because I have the report signed, it doesn't take into account also, you know, I might spend another 45 minutes there, you know, go, going mm -hmm. over and walking through again just to make sure that they understand what the violations are. Find out how that can be incorporated in it and that there is a way to do it, do that too. They can add it for discussion or post inspection. Okay. So that may be a way to keep track of it. That way you know that your time is counted for. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ed, does it also do the uh, COVID inspection in and out times also on that one too, or no? No, the, on the, the COVID, the, the, so the software that we're using for the COVID does not time it. Um, no. It just, it, you could, I mean, we could manually put it in, but in the notes, but it does not. So you should probably incorporate that one in your report too. What's, okay. what's the, what's, why? It, it's, it gives when it was in, how long did it take some time to inspect it? Because sometimes a small establishment may not take that long, but the larger one, it takes more time. So then we know that how much time has been spent in, in educating these establishments. And we can come back next time. So we spent so much time, we didn't learn anything. And, so we and can come in, back. And in general, oh, really not measuring that. A KG, I think that you go in, you do the inspect. If they're going in and doing the education, or you know, telling, going around pointing. I, I mean, I don't see clocking in when you walk in the building. No, no, not in. clocking them, but the amount of time that we are spending with these establishment because we need to do that. That's where what happens if we need more help in terms of uh, physical uh, additional members, we can establish and improve it to the town. Think that look, we need additional people to help us out. How do you yeah. count it? Yeah, okay. to that, Judy, I think to that, to what KG just said, I'll second that too. We, we had talked about that in the past as well too, is uh, at one time we were sitting in a basement trying to fight with management to say, you know, we need more food inspectors. And they're saying, well, how much time do you spend in these places? So having that information is just data that, that can help us to say how much time food inspectors actually spend at these establishments. So that, well, that should we should we need an additional and that's a good segue to what, when I put these items on the agenda, I thought it would be healthy for us to go over some of the things which I call are on my pending list, which I'm sure is the board's pending list as well. But, oops, sorry. But with the food program is that, you know, I'm happy that we're all going to be, you know, excuse me, the, the, the crew is going to be using the same program, but also we, like you said, we need that information. But like when Mark mentioned at the last meeting, and I'm sure everybody saw my face about bringing on another food inspector, that was before we talked to Tom, I talked to Tom, and Tom is willing, able, and capable of doing more hours for us. So at this point, I don't want to entertain bringing on any dog, but I don't want to entertain <laughs> bringing on no, any no, it is right. I mean, obviously, we don't, we don't have the data to establish it. I can't just convince and go and tell them to give me more money because I have no data. I need to have data. That's important. Right. It's in general, it, it's less about more people than than spending more hours and paying for Correct. more hours. Because even Correct. if Tom is doing it, which is great, um, we have to pay him for his time. Definitely, Tom's able to do more for us. So we've already had that conversation. And that's you know, terrific. So. Thank you, Thank you, Tom. Um, if nobody has anything yeah. else for Tom, we'll let Tom go. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Tom. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tom. Thank you for your work. Time. Spend time with that baby of yours. <laughs> two. That's where I'm going now. <laughs> two, two babies. Twins, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Have a good night. Yeah. Good night. That's okay. Ed, you're up. I'm up. Yay. So uh, you can probably figure it out. I'm earning my nickname. I've heard I have a new nickname around town, um, especially because I've been visiting the uh, baseball fields and uh, uh, making sure they're in compliance. I have a nickname now, the COVID cop. 
Um, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, just so everyone knows, um, obviously you see I'm out there doing uh, these COVID inspections, you know, um, trying to do a, at least two or three a week if I can. Um, the phone does not stop ringing. Um, our numbers are going up. Um, so just so you know, since a week ago Monday, <clears throat> we've gotten six new confirmed cases and nine probables. Um, so that's a pretty significant jump from the previous weeks. Um, you know, but it's but what but we're consistent with the towns around us. The numbers going up also. Um, you know, I think we see it, you know, and you've all been driving around, uh, we're seeing parties, you know, backyard parties, multiple people, no one with masks on, um, really close together. Um, you know, today, I don't know if any of you saw it, the governor announced that if these numbers continue to tick up, he's actually talking about bringing us down a phase, um, you know, kicking it back, you know, coming, maybe coming out of phase three, Going back to phase two, um, again, more to be seen on that. Um, the other thing I do want to let you know that I've been working on, <clears throat> I know um, we talked about trying to plan for the future, um, especially if a vaccine comes out, um, you know, what, what's that going to look like, you know, to, to vaccinate, you know, potentially a few thousand people, um, even working with Framingham. <clears throat> um, so one of the things that um, I actually had a great conversation last week with um, uh, Sam Wong from Framingham, what a health, um, any flu clinic or immunization or vaccine for COVID is going to look completely different than any other regular flu clinic because people are going to have to social distance. It can't be just where people show up. Um, and also, if we do a clinic in the wintertime, even if we try to do a drive-through clinic, um, you, you can't have all this staff standing out in the freezing cold trying to do this. So one of the things that I, and I think I've mentioned this to the board before, I've been looking for softwares um, where people will be able to answer all of the questions on a questionnaire ahead of time, um, you know, basically allergies, you know, put in there, um, uh, doctor, their name, their address, and answer a series of questions, and then be able to book an appointment. Um, that way we'd have a flow, people will, be, will have a great way to document it. Um, so I looked at a few different uh, softwares around, and yes, yeah, some were good, some were bad, and then uh, my brain just kind of went crazy, and I actually figured it out how to do it ourselves. Um, so I, I came up with it on Google Forms, and I actually was able to get an add-on added on to my Google Forms because the town has the enterprise license. And I was able to add on a calendar function where people can pick a date and time. And then, you know, you can have, let's say you have three people at eight o'clock on a Friday. Um, once those three people are signed up, that time slot actually goes away. So I actually finished that this morning and I sent it to Sam Wong to test out and just give me some suggestions back and forth. Um, what I'll do tomorrow morning for the board, I'll email you out what I've come up with, and you can try it yourself. Um, I have it just set up as a test. And um, I've actually also used Google Translate to put the form in multiple languages. Um, Ed, Ed, can yes. I jump in for one second? The, sure. Will it meet all the privacy requirements that, that are needed? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. I've already checked it because it's going to be on the town secure site. Okay. Yep. Um, again, just looking for some feedback. Um, just trying to think outside the box. Um, I did go over to the MRC trailer today also to see what we actually had for supplies in there. Um, there's quite a bit in there, uh, boxes of gloves. I did, since they were expired, I opened up a couple of boxes to make sure that the gloves weren't brittle or anything. They, they seemed fine. Um, there's some masks in there. There's tables. Um, I do think we need to look um, at ordering more stuff shortly. I don't know where that money comes from, just to make sure that we do have enough in the event we have to have multiple clinics coming up in the future, um, especially where PPE equipment is taking, you know, up to 120 days to receive it once it's ordered. Um, you, will you be working with Mark when he gets back on that? Because I mean, we do have, um, 
you know, CARES Act money, but I, I know that we have grant money as we got two grants for COVID. Um, the town has um, the CARES Act money. And then of course is medical reserve core money. So like I said, I, I mean, yep. and we should have an inventory also of what do we, all right, we need a, I, I we need a, we we actually do. We need a full inventory of that trailer, every last box, not just that there's five tables. We need to have a physical count. Um, what I can do is I can um, I can check with Jen in the morning. What I maybe could do is get a couple of the high school kids that need community service. And well, let's just check with Mark when he gets back to make sure because sure. I don't know if Mike Gurnick might have it. I'm still waiting to have okay. an MRC meeting, but uh, I mean it'd be, it's a great idea to have something yep. like that, especially like I said before yep. the weather. You know. Yep. You, know, yeah, you, you also need to check out what's expired there so to take those yeah. and replenish them soon rather exactly than right. um and that was another thing that i did have a track talk with sam wong about you know he he actually said you know to me that yes they they have enough supplies they think for right now but he said whatever we could potentially order um you know they're going to be doing the same thing also just to make sure we always have enough supplies on hand um that's my kind of my quick COVID update. Um, I'll be glad to answer any, like I said, I'm just trying every, every week is just crazy. <laughs> uh, I also heard that uh, there is a pop-up uh, tent uh, for tests that is coming up on August 5th in Framingham. Framingham, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, it kind of to segue into my next agenda item about the um, city of Framingham nursing services. When I was on the conference call with them last week, which was very no, uh, very educational, um, they had explained that the demographics in Framingham, there's a certain concentration, concentrated area that they're noticing the, the volume of cases is higher. Um, and they said that they were trying to get um, you know, Spilker to open up a free clinic because those people could not get to the free clinic in, in Marlboro. Um, and he said the demographics in this area, um, there's more than one family living in a home. So when one gets positive, you know, it's, you know, it straight, uh, stems from there. So originally I was going to ask the board to write a letter or, to, you know, to support that for Framingham, but um, turned out they got it um, anyhow, which they, um, I re you know, reached out to them. Um, they're thrilled because they're hoping that they can get um, a little bit more control of their numbers by having the free clinic. So kudos to Framingham for pushing, pushing the envelope. Are there such um, areas in our town too, or no? Um, no, I, oh, I'm sorry, no, we're, we're spread out. It, there's no clusters at all that I've been able to identify. Yeah, um, Ed, I know you, this, some of this you're interested in if you wanna, um, unless, does anybody have any COVID questions for Ed? I just wanted to move on. Yeah. I know um, any I update that. on the Waterview Large and other things, one of those? Yeah, yeah so, um, Again, they've had, um, they did some random testing last week. They did have three of their patients retest positive, but, but they're still asymptomatic. And remember, you know, and I just want to remind everybody that you can test positive up to three months, um, even by nasal swab. So as long as they're asymptomatic, they still consider them clear at that point. Um, and again, I, I just kudos to Dutch um, and the staff there. They have been in constant, constant communication with us. Um, and I just want to make sure, you know, that is, we've really fixed that communication problem with Waterview Lodge. They've been right on top of everything. As well as Mill Pond, they continually send emails, yeah. as well, which is very good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just one thing to, to think about, Ed. I, I'm not sure of exactly you know the the manpower that's on this as far as scheduling things so I think if just to gain a little bit more control depending upon how many people are going to be coming in to make it more efficient you know if you have people going online and then seeing the slot go away and then you might have two hours um it, it at least at Newton Wellesley and <laughs> you know basically the, the partners network if you I wanted to get one to just go visit my folks. So I said, I found out they've been doing it now for four or five months and it was a very well oiled machine. You actually asked for the order, the order is placed. And I know we're not talking about an order because you're not going to need one for this vaccine. Then the actual, the, the doctor places the order, then the testing center gets in touch with you and says, all right, come at this time. And they have basically 
they have, you know, three or four tents set up, you know, and definitely two tents that people can go into. You drive up, um, somebody checks you in, they put you in a spot, there's probably 20 spots there, and it's just a steady line of people. It never seems like there's that many people, they just do it. I know that may take more administrative work to do and it may not be possible, but that's yeah. kind of how they, they keep it you know, moving effectively. Yeah, and, and I think we were just trying to figure out a way for people to be able to pre-register with all of their information instead of having people show up, try to fill out a form, you know, and go from there. We kind of, we're right. kind of thinking of this as a pre-registration to be able to capture all the information that we need ahead of time. Right. That also uh, reduces the contact time frame at that place, yes. Right. Yeah, again, and again, we, we have to look at weather. I, I, I don't know, again, right. just, just trying to, Oh yeah. So every time I think of something, you know, eight more things come up, you know? <laughs> well, we do have to be careful. I mean, and when, I, when we were talking, when we had the, um, the um, city of Framingham meeting last week, they said that the, the cluster that they were referring to, that's where they're having the biggest increase and it does border our community. Um, so of course that was a red flag, of course. So hopefully um, with having the free clinic in Framingham for the next couple of weeks, that will, hopefully alleviate that problem. Um, you, you know, just, you know, can I just, you know, I just want to, you know, th you know, I want everyone just to kind of, because I was thinking of this too, think about, you know, the, when they open up these free clinics or the drive throughs the lines can be two, three hours long. I want to avoid that when a vaccine comes out. I right. want people to have a time to come in, you know, that's what I'm trying to avoid, these lines of cars and, like, like the, just so you know, in Marlboro, the average wait time was three and a half hours yep. wow. in your car. So yeah. I, that's what I'm trying to avoid when a vaccine comes up. Right. Thank God you're thinking there ahead of time. Yeah. We appreciate yeah, that. And they do in Marlboro also, they require you, you're required to have a phone. Everybody that's getting tested has to have a phone and they, they text you when you, you know, from place to place. Yeah. Good. So um, talking about vaccinations and all that, um, again, I put some of these items on the agenda because they're kind of pending and I wanted to review them with the board, but I know we talked in the past um, about the, uh, so the whole reason why we wanted to get into the intermunicipal agreement with the city of Framingham is because we were contacted them, um, they contacted us, excuse me, saying that they had a, a volume of people from Ashland that were coming there and they couldn't keep allowing residents to come there because we didn't have an agreement. So we were recently, we asked Framingham for the numbers because I'm kind of curious how many people that they've done. Um, and I chuckle a little bit inside because 2020, you can't really look at those numbers that well. But when I looked at the 2019 numbers, there's 80 flu vaccinations. Now I know Ron and Mark had commented that they went to a, they estimated about 300 Ashland residents. Um, there was 80, um, they, excuse me, I'm sorry, backing up a little bit, sorry about that, I'm looking at too many numbers. So, yeah, I'm sorry, there was 80 flu in, in 2019 and there was 56 in 2018, so the numbers are up there. But we were also advised that it, the reason why we needed uh, more nursing services was because we have um, school-aged children who are under or uninsured who need vaccinations. So when the information was sent over, I took it and I scrambled it again. I, we all like this data thing. I took the information, and I tried to make some sense out of it, and then I, I gave it to Laura, who did a good job to finalize it. Um, and just to let the board know the numbers, and again, I know they are 2020, is probably not that accurate, but um, in 2020, they, I went from age 17 and down. I, did, I assume 17 would probably be the cutoff. So they've done five children, under the age of 17 in 2020. They did 25 in 2019, and they did 14 in 2018. Not, so, as, not as many as uh, we were led to believe. I, I just, I mean, the numbers speak volumes, and I just wanted to share that because I, uh, it's not that I don't think it's necessary, but I, it's good to see the numbers on paper of how many people that they're going to be servicing for us. 
AG feels so good right now about, I, <laughs> about I, the importance I, of I, data. <laughs> I know. I, know. I do. And I just, uh, you know, and I do have this. I've marked it up. I will um, get it to you. I don't know. I think Laura might have sent the spreadsheet to you. Um, uh, it's, yeah. it's very interesting. So I just wanted to pass that along. Um, and again, that is I mean, good data. That is good data. They, they could have gotten these things long time back if they wanted to show us all the data, but we didn't well, have it. Well, the thing is, I think what was more concerning to me, to be honest with you, KG, is, is that we were we were told there was, a, I'll say a lot, that's going to be my terminology, a lot of school-age kids that needed vaccinations. And to have 25, that's, I mean, that's a good number. That's not a lot in my, no. I mean, it's good, though. It's good. We we made sure we got those 25 children vaccinated. Um, and with that said, when I had the meeting last week, Mark was on vacation, so I um, I joined the meeting. Um, the first part of it, we did talk a little bit about COVID um, and um, the testing and so forth, but um, we didn't get really into too many details about the actual IMA, because I know there's been questions and so forth that have been circled around, but we did talk about that normally after they sign the IMA, they do a scope of work and a budget. Um, just to reiterate, I think the board probably remembers that there's actually going to be a board set up. We'll have one voting member which I assume will be marked, but one voting member that will sit on that board. So normally that board writes the scope of the work and then defined a budget. But because of quite a few questions, including ours, um, they're going to do the scope of work now and do the defined budget for the first year so everybody can see how it is. Um, uh, right now, yeah, Hudson, Hudson is still in, uh, Hudson, Holliston, and Ashland. Um, but they're looking at making it a purchase of services through Framingham because um, then at least if there's vacation time to that staff, we would still have coverage. The way that the agreement is written right now, um, if there was somebody was out sick or there was vacation, there would be no, um, there would be no coverage. Um, we did talk about a flu clinic, um, how that would work under the plan. Um, and um, basically Framingham just advised them they would do exactly what they're doing for us now. Um, they're, already, they're already vaccinated our residents. Um, so flu will not be an issue, um, and we could probably put more concentration into do a COVID clinic, so we can kind of concentrate on that. Um, um, just for clarification as well, because I did ask some specific questions, um, they had the job has been posted. So I know people have asked about the job description. Um, the job was posted two and a half months ago. Uh, so if anybody knows anybody uh, looking for a nursing position, it's still out there. Um, they had three people apply. One withdrew, uh, one got a higher offer, and the other one was not qualified. So they're still um, still looking for somebody, full-time benefits. Um, so again, if anybody knows anything, um, to contact the city of Framingham. Um, looking at a couple of my notes here. Um, I think that covers it for me for the um, item number five for the IMA and the nursing services. Um, does anybody have any questions for me on that? Is there, look how crazy you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, if everybody's all set, I'll move on just a couple other quick things. Um, as I think the board knows me pretty well by now, I mean, these items I put on the agenda is because I want answers and some of them seem to be taking quite a bit of time. So I took it upon myself to get uh, one answer, and I'm going to share this with Mark when he gets back. So last uh, last budget year, we were over in the salary line item by 10,000. Um, this is because of um, non-union cost of living increases, as well as we take $5,000 annually out of our food program and move it over to cover um, or to um, offset Mark's salary because he does food inspections. Um, so that takes care of the overage in our FY20 budget. We weren't bottom line, we were not over, but just that line item. And uh, we talked about it at a couple of meetings, so I wanted to make sure um, that I got that answer for the board. Um, another, um, just to let you know, these, the things that I put on the agenda, if anybody has anything else, um, I'm going to probably type up a list for Mark because I think with everything going on, it seems to be getting overwhelming. Things are, we talked about the same thing meeting after meeting, so I'm going to do like a um, a pending list for Mark just to, so he can see some of these items um, that we're talking about. So, um, Dan, can I just back up? Sure. So there was there was an overage on our budget 
that Mark presented to us. And somebody went and talked to the financial director and found out. I, um, I'm not too sure if Mark said he was in contact with somebody. I, I used to work with the finance director, so I actually just asked her. Okay. Um, and she hadn't had, she wasn't contacted, but she, um, she wasn't contacted by Mark, but she said she would look into it. So she got back to me and she advised me that, you know, bottom line, which is what matters. Uh, right. Her, it was not over, but okay. explain to me how come we were over in that line item. Could you explain to Mark when he gets back so that he knows going forward how that yep. works? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm thinking that I might see if Mark uh, about having a meeting with Mark and maybe Jen just to go over some of these things. Um, I just on I don't know about anybody else, but on my pending list, I feel like I have a lot on my pending list, and I know when we reorganize this, we talked about a lot going on. I think sometimes some of the things get pushed down at the bottom of the list, and we just need to make sure that they stay on. So yeah, one of those items I'm sure is coming up. <laughs> Would you say I didn't understand you? One's coming up that I want to talk about. Oh, oh yeah, I was going to say the, the next. Well, the medical reserve core, I assume that's what yep. you're talking about. Yeah. Um, again, it's been a little challenging to get a meeting set up with the medical reserve core chair, Mike Gernick, um, and the medical reserve core group that's housed in Framingham. Okay. Um, so I'm still pursuing having a meeting. I know Ed mentioned it. I mean, we have we have. Uh, possibly, you know, clinics coming up in the future. We need to make sure that we know how much supplies we have, um, which I do want, I do expect an inventory of that. Um, we need to really work on our recruitment. Um, so I'm hoping that when I have, when I finally get the meeting, is that they shed some light on it. Um, and, yeah. and honestly, I, I have some basic questions. Like we, I don't know if we're supposed to annually appoint Mike Gernick as the chair. I'm not even too sure how he's appointed or if we are supposed to do it. Like some of the basic questions I need to ask to kind of go back to find out where we're at. Um, I think, I think um, you know, we really thought that we had a process down after we brought in, um, I forget her name, that's sort of the overseer of the medical corps. Roberta? Roberta. Um, and you know, we thought we had a process in place that would simplify getting volunteers, but it kind of fell apart and um, for a lot of reasons. But um, so I think we probably have to maybe work with other towns and I'll take it upon myself to contact Kitty Mahoney and just ask her like, what's your process? Because I just think we, we have to streamline how you sign up for it, how you take that first class online, how you get your uh, badge. Um, I haven't gotten mine yet. I haven't gotten my badge, and that's my fault. Um, I, think what, I think what I would ask you, if you just hold on just a little bit so I can, I, I'm trying to get this actual virtual meeting together. And I mean, if you, you're welcome to join the meeting as long as we don't have three of us. But the exact same thing is, is because we started the process, it did not seem that smoothly. We need to work it out because we collectively need to get more members um, and we need to just, we need to iron out some of the glitches. Um, and, um, and I just, I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, Mark will be back next week. I'm hoping I can pull the meeting together so when he gets back, it'll be already on his calendar. Okay. Yeah, I've been with the board for the past five years or so. We have never had uh, any appointment done for MRC. And I understand that this probably uh, Board of Health does it, but never took any steps that I know of. And that's a question I have to ask them. I don't know if we're supposed to have it on as an annual appointment, which I'll, um, I'll ask Roberta. You'll find out. You'll find yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, let's see. Then the next item on the agenda is the minutes from July 7th. Did everybody get a chance to look at them? They make yeah, them there, were, there were two sets. There was an amended set. Just, I don't know if all of you caught that. Yeah. yeah. I make a motion to accept the amended Set. I'll set that. Yeah. Aye. 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 Aye, Chris. Aye, Diane. Aye, Judy. Um, the, Aye, robot. Um, what'd you say, Chris? Aye, robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna, I was gonna say you're the, you're the next item for discussion. So the Aye. next, the well, the next ah. meeting would be the 18th. Mm -hmm. In general, usually July and August we only meet once. Um and we have them meeting on a regular schedule. If the board wants to meet without Chris, we can meet on the 18th. 
If not, we can meet on the first. I got a feeling Triple E is going to be at our doorstep, so we better okay. do the 18th. Okay. And, and Diane, I don't know if you can talk about this now or put it on the meeting. I know that um, you had the walkthrough with the Board of Selectmen. And, oh, yes, thank you. And I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, um, we can talk about it now because it was a, it was a COVID one, and I, I'm glad you reminded me, Rod, because I, I was um, I was very impressed. Um, I know uh, Sergeant Bourbon was there as well. Um, so we, uh, actually Judy was there as well, but, um, a KG too, but just for the record, we didn't yeah. have a board meeting, <laughs> but, um, it was, it was eye opening the process that was put in front of them to make sure that our children were safe. Um, they had us go on a school bus like the children would sit every other seat, which was interesting. It's been a long time since I think we've all been on a school bus. Um, then get off the school bus at each school and show us how they will line the children, uh, kids of all ages, um, up at the different schools. Um, they brought us through the hallways to show us the one ways, um, one way hallways. Um, some of them they do have to split, how they're gonna mark the floors. And then we went in, in, in to each classroom at the school. And um, it was, in, was eye-opening when they set the, the desks up for three feet and they set the desk up six feet apart. Some of them were shoulder to shoulder, you know, it depends on the angle of the room, yeah, uh, but yeah. all the students have to face forward, which is very um, challenging for the way some of the classrooms are set up. Um, again, I, I think all I can say was very eye-opening. Um, my understanding, and please correct me if anybody has any kids in the school, my understanding is, is they're, they're making a decision to go um, two days a week um, in person for the school, and I'm assuming the other, um, three would be virtual. Um, I just heard that today. Yeah. Um, but they had to submit two different plans um, on their protocol for reopening. Um, so I'm assuming that's what they're going to go with with the um, two days a week. Well, How many students are they allowing on a bus? Do you know? 20, so, right, Ed? <laughs> 15, well, I, mean, I guess. Well, it, dep right? it depends, right? Oh, so we, we, we have 77 passenger buses, so we can put 25 on a bus. Okay. I, I say that because they were saying that, you know, parents, there's some parents who won't send their kids to school at all, physical school. Um, so they're saying that the numbers are all over the place on how many actual students are going to be in the classroom and how many students aren't. But it just, there was a lot of factors that they have to deal with. And um, it was very, um, it was very eye opening. Um, I know we talked about having Jim Adams at our next meeting on the 18th um, to go over it. Um, Chris, are you comfortable with us still doing that? I, mean, I have nothing but faith in all of you. Okay. So if, <laughs> if the other, I mean, is everybody comfortable with that to see if we can? That's get fine. It? Okay. Diane, so does it, does it work that the teachers are in every day, but the students are only going to go one set of students is only going to go two days a week and then there's going to be like a live feed so that the students at home are kind of plugged into the class. How does that work? My understanding, Ed might be able to elaborate on the, the teachers, but my understanding was is the, 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 the um, separation of the um, two, just two days a week is for one day to clean. If I understood that, Ed, like, yeah. so they, they would go two days, there'd be a cleaning day, and then there would be the second set of students who came. I'm not sure if they're going to, I'm assuming staff would be there all the time, Ed, do you know? I'm not sure about I that. Think, I think what the plan was four days a week. Wednesday would be the major cleaning day. Okay. So, yeah, I think nobody Again, would be nothing, there. It's not, and it's still being negotiated, a majority of it. Okay, yeah, okay. And I'll, when I talk to Jim also, is if he feels that, I mean, he may or may not feel comfortable coming on the 18th. If not, we'll move it, but I'll... I'll check with them to see if he thinks they'll have um, information then. Okay, uh, from Diane, you and KG and Ju, you and KG, what did, what did you think about how? Uh, yeah, there is uh, problems are like, you know, team learning may be a difficulty because they cannot put the students together in a group. That's one issue. And the other issue is that we don't know whether all the teachers want to come in either because some of the teachers may don't want to come in, they want offline. So there may be need for a hiring additional teachers for the same subject because there may be one online, one may be face to face. So those are the issues that they may come up. So the, 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 I, I don't know if it was discussed at that meeting, it probably wasn't, but the, I'm sure there are memorandums of agreement between the unions involved as well because 
I've, I've seen that on my end at, at the college. It's, uh, it's, you know, you have to, there's a lot of ground to cover. It's just very complicated. It is. In fact, Suffolk University is offering uh, transportation costs and parking facilities for teachers who don't want to take the public transportation, all of these things. But I think there are one too many issues that the superintendent has to handle. I think there are too many dots to fill in to make it right. So they may be still working on most of the items. And I, I think partially it, it, it's okay to get in there, but the question is, can we maintain the safe distance with younger kids? Because they cannot be controlled for all the uh, things like the first graders or second graders. We can't do that uh, easily. The rest of them, maybe they will listen to. The adults may not. Right. You watch the news, we can't control the adults. That's possible. <laughs> um, Diane, sorry, one last question. Oh, what, no what's the potential deadline for deciding which plan they're going to go with? And who make, is it, or is it the board of selectmen or the school board or a combination of the both? I know that Jim had said that there was, they had to put together two plans to submit two plans, which of course the school committee would um, vote and support. Um, I'm not too sure if it's up to, uh, I'm not too sure who approves it at the, at the state level. I'm assuming if you're submitting two, they have to pick one. Um, I, I don't really know that answer. I don't know what um, happens after the plan. As Ed said that uh, the Charlie Baker could Roll yeah. back the conditions. Yeah. So everything fails out. You yeah. made the plan, and the Charlie says everything is on, subject to change the with the numbers too. too. Yeah, right. So that's that's a big thing. Cool. Okay, we ready? All right. Say, I'm not, there we go. Who's hungry? Yeah, I was gonna say Ed and I have a field trip. <laughs> Diane, as soon as we hang up, I'll get in my car and I'll pick you up. Awesome. Hey, what what did you do? Why you don't know my address, Ed? <laughs> that would be a boat. Oh, oh. KG, I get enough calls from you. <laughs> you only, oh, not, I, 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 thought of, I thought of coming there to the inspection too. I move to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 755. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.